Hello and welcome to something that is a bit new for me. My name is Thorn and today I'm going to be playing some levels for all of you. I am very new to this sort of thing, but my aim is to give feedback on some of these levels and sort of approach it from my position as a level creator and some of the knowledge I have about making levels and these kind of levels in general. So without too much further ado, let's hop on in. Now I will say, I have played most of these levels before. Just because I enjoy playing these, this game a lot, and hadn't thought before of wanting to do something like this. But hopefully that just helps me ease into this. So first up, I'm going to play Electroman Adventures V2, level by DXL44. This is a remake of Galactica's Electroman Adventures level. Battle against Zap, the expert electrician who's been told to fight you by cookies. Interesting name. I'm sure we'll hear a bit more once we're in the level. This is just a really nice start to a level. The background's really nice. I don't mess around with backgrounds myself too much, but DXL44 is good at making them really nice. Hello there, whatever your name is. Cookies sent me to deal with you. Oh, purple name. Don't really think it's a good idea, but orders are orders. And he's right into fighting us. So this... I like how quickly that... That first little introduction segment, like, introduces... Probably the four sort of, like, you know, some of the main attack types he does. The whole level. Because, yeah, like, you got the spears, then you got the electricity. Sort of the lightning beams and stuff. Attacks have really good warnings in this level. The XL44 is usually really good with that sort of thing. And overall, this is this is an easier level, so... As long as I don't do something stupid. Yeah. It's nice the little details that he's added on these attacks. Like, just the one color, but adding just even that extra little detail adds so much. Now this section. This section is probably my favorite, I think. Well, it's all really good, but just, I like these attacks, they're so funky the way that they just move off a little bit, but not, and the warnings for them are actually really good, like, you might be a little bit confused at first, but you can generally tell where you shouldn't be. And yeah, it's just... Like, overall, a really nice level. Oh. Wait, stop! I'm on your side! I knew cookies was wrong. Uh, sorry. Why did you say hello? That's a very good point. In the context of this story. What? Or this level. Why didn't we say this earlier? Could have avoided everything, you know. But yeah, just... A really good level. Very well animated. From start to finish. And I think that is actually the first time I've gotten SS on this level, so kind of proud of that. But yeah, like, animations are just very smooth, nothing moves too fast or too slow. And it just, every part flows together, and nothing gets too overwhelming. Which for an... For a hard level? I, I don't know if I'd call that hard, actually. That's probably more around a normal level difficulty. At least, compared to some of my own levels. Uh. But yeah, that was the first level I wanted to play. Next, we have Endless. This is a level by Spitfire, another fellow mod over on the Project Rhythmia Discord. This is made for Ked... I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Kedudsums? JCB collection with the theme Crystals and Lasers. I think that's how it's pronounced. 
Correct me if I am wrong. Yeah, another another really nice level that I'm gonna show off for you. I haven't seen anybody else play this one at least. As far as I remember. A really chill start. You get a slight idea of what's to come with these hexagonal attacks. That's definitely one thing that's interesting. You mainly use the hexagons here and lasers. Mainly. Really. The warning time on those is really good. The real danger at this point is all those tiny little hexagons going up and down. Those can always catch you off guard. The smaller projectile is, the harder it is to keep track of. And especially if they're spawning under you, but it doesn't happen here. Yeah, see? This is a good little scrolling section. You're not actually scrolling too fast, but it's still enough to keep you on your toes. And like, and, and now to make it even more dangerous, you can't actually stay along the bottom edge with those spikes there. But for the most part, not too hard. This section is interesting because most of these lasers you can just avoid by staying on the one left to right way. Like, but you still do have to dodge the bullets from the bombs, and sometimes that will get you into trouble. But it's everything's avoidable in a good way, though. Like. He's using most of the sounds in the song really well, honestly. It's simple, but it just works visually nice. Get all these... Oh, back to the build-up. Here we go again. I do... Ooh, that was a little close for comfort. Yeah, the thing I do love most about this level in particular is it, it does really a good job of, like, the attacks don't happen straight away on the notes, they build up and then fire off. And you don't always get a lot of that in levels, and it's something that's unexplored a lot. I've tried to do a bit of that myself, and it's something I've been trying to- oh, fuck. Oh god, I was in the middle of everything there, I could not- I'm glad for the invulnerability period. But yeah, it's something I've been trying to get people to have a look at more and, you know, just play around with and stuff. Because I do a lot of that on the Project Rhythmia Discord. I actually, you know, help people out, suggest ideas when they're struggling or wanting help with stuff or wondering how else they could, you know, make something. And so I want to do a bit of that here as well. Endless song by Creo, the end. S rank. Would have been an SS if I hadn't. I was not paying attention there. I completely take the fault there. And that's honestly a good sign with a level. If you can feel like it was your fault that you had hit instead of the level, that's really good. That is really what most levels should aim for. Lastly, I would like to play a level that's a bit older, which is Surface Tension by Dragon W. This was made for the 2020.2 Shadows level contest. There were a lot of good levels that came out of that contest. Honestly, people were very creative in a lot of different ways. And this is probably my favorite ver version of Surface Tension as far as any levels that have been done with the song. So let's just hop right into it. I did not read the, de the description. Uh. Also, yeah, just one thing that's very smart with this level, and something people always don't think about, the very first beam attack doesn't happen right on the player. Oh, shit, I had my hand off the control like an idiot. Yeah, first beam doesn't actually have will never hit where the player is. It intentionally is set to be on the right and that means no it's not dangerous to the player but it teaches them what to avoid and that's a really good thing to do that prepares them and 
makes it easier for them to play the level properly. Ah, uh, yes. Beams that spawn bullets. This is actually a really good little section because the question is whether you stay on the outside or in between the two. And whatever you choose, you're definitely going to have to be avoiding some stuff because of these bullets. That's a really nice intro. Oh, light number one is dead. I do wonder what happens to them here. They just pop out of existence. Getting darker. And the build-up's coming up. Oh, shit. I have to stay in the light because can't see the warnings without it. Also, I have to compliment those bombs. That bomb effect is just really pretty. Like, I don't know, just it's very visually pleasing. This is really good. I do... It's always interesting with levels like these that are left sort of vague what's going on. I do wonder what all these claws are. And this bot's really cool. Generally the safest spot is up here because then you can see the warnings. And there's also waves. Just don't touch the light. I forgot that. I actually forgot that. I should have remembered. The light itself is also dangerous. Which we'll see more of. I say that, and then I get hit. Ooh, that's not entirely the best place to spawn. That might need to be a thing that gets fixed, that spawn spot. Luckily, I could dash out of the way. Always be careful of where you spawn the player, because if you spawn the player and they get hit instantly, that's never fair. That's never fun. Luckily, it wasn't the case there. And now, as you can see, the light's attacking us. The particles on those little beams are really pretty. Luckily, the particles them... I got too close. The particles themselves, I don't think, can actually hurt you. I could be wrong about that, but it doesn't seem like they do. These particles, however, can hurt you. It's interesting, because you only have the... Your tails to go off of where you are, because it's just... It's not safe to be near the light at this point. As you can see, like, by the tax earlier, and this. Generally, when you have something like this in the center, the safest place is always furthest away as possible. Because if an attack's coming out from there, you have more room further away. People can play with that, and, like, create borders on the outside to force you to be nearby. Oh, here we go. Or... Yep. <laughs> I should have waited to say, here we go. This draw's really cool. I do wonder what the deal is with the red light. It's corrupted or like, um, shouldn't say corrupted, but like, definitely something sort of like, twisted to this light. I do like this part. Or you just get a sort of slight indication of where you are with those beams. It's a really good little effect. And yeah, this section's kind of cool where it's switching back and forth. You get to see yourself a little. It's interesting, like, there's this sort of pull back and forth between the darkness and... This remaining light. I wonder why this light managed to survive and the others just popped out. That's always one thing I've questioned. Wait, here I can just sit still. I'm actually safe at this point. This is just sort of cutscene-y. I've seen people freak out and get hit by these hands. It's very amusing when that happens. And there it goes. Into the abyss. But yeah, like... That level is also really fun, and it plays with the shadows really well, both making the light dangerous and the shadows dangerous in a variety of ways throughout the whole level, really. And most of the warnings are pretty good. There is a few spots where it can be a little bit extra tricky, like, it's not 
really indicated to you at any point that the light itself can hit you. That's something you only learn if you hit it accidentally. And that can happen. I've seen people do it. I did it myself there because I forgot. But beyond that little detail, the entire level is fantastic from start to end. And it uses the song really, really well. And yeah, I got a B rank, so... So yeah, I think that's it for this episode, or whatever. Hopefully I'll be doing more of these. I don't know entirely what I'm going to play next. If you guys have suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or whatever. I will probably avoid story stuff for the moment, because I want to try to do those in their own little series and stuff, and I want to get a bit more practice with this before I do. But I think this went really well, and I hope all of you enjoyed this. I will see you, hopefully, next time I do this. See ya.